Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. You may have noticed this strange device spinning away in the background of my videos, particularly during segments where I'm playing guitar. For those of us who are not quite old enough to remember, this is a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. This particular model is an Akai 4000D, a fairly inexpensive and general purpose recording device that would have been fairly common in many households in the 1970s. People would have used these to record radio broadcasts or as a dictation device, and they could even play back music from pre-recorded tapes, although vinyl records were much more popular for that application. Here's a snippet of a 70s BBC radio broadcast that I recovered from this tape. The technological wonders of our age, stereo records, hi-fi, synthetic sound, the Moog synthesizer, which in case you didn't know was the electronic marvel on which the earlier version of that Brandenburg concerto was played, all these devices raise interesting aesthetic issues, as do these new approaches to the music of earlier times. This has led people watching my videos to wonder if I'm recording my guitar samples to tape, which technically I am, but not in the way that you might be thinking. All of the main guitar sounds you hear are recorded digitally, using the XLR output on the back of my attenuator, into my audio interface with an appropriate cabinet IR applied. The tape recorder isn't affecting those aspects of the guitar recording, but it is recording the guitar, and then playing it back moments later into a mixer, which then throws that delayed audio back into the tape machine an infinite number of times, creating an echo effect. <laughs> That's right, I've turned my tape recorder into a tape delay effect for guitar, although this isn't an ideal situation. Dedicated tape delay effects have existed for a long time and are quite different from my recorder here. They consist of a closed loop of tape which lies unspooled in the container and gets dragged round and round the machine across multiple playback heads and there's complete control over the speed at which that tape gets delivered. My recorder is a very different beast. It only has one playback head and two very defined speeds at which the tape can be fed through the system. Although, you can't do what I'm doing right now with a dedicated tape echo machine. And with a little bit of tweaking and trickery, I can get very similar echo results from this. But before I show you how I get this working as a delay effect, perhaps we should talk about how this machine works and how it is we can record sound to tape at all. This is magnetic tape, the single most important recording medium in history. Tape revolutionised broadcast media, allowing radio programmes to be pre-recorded rather than all performed live. It also allowed the field recording of sounds and voices, improving cinema and journalism. It shaped the course of wars, helped solve criminal investigations, and was the basis for the multi-track music recording techniques that we still use to this day, despite magnetic tape largely being supplanted by digital methods. It consists of iron oxide powder, suspended on plastic tape, which is then drawn across magnetic tape heads in the device. A record head magnetises the iron oxide on the tape according to the sound being captured, the magnitude and polarity of the magnetisation creating a snapshot of the audio signal. The tape will retain this magnetised pattern, allowing the audio to be stored there indefinitely. A playback head then senses the magnetic pattern on the tape and converts it back to an electric signal in the reverse of the previous process. The third head on this machine is an erase head, which obviously erases the tape by scrambling it back to a magnetically neutral position. The tape heads are split into two reading or writing elements and the tape divided into four tracks. This will allow the audio to be recorded in stereo in both directions of the tape or four different mono recordings, two in each direction. The speed the tape is drawn across the heads will determine the fidelity of the sounds. Faster feeding speeds will produce a more detailed recording, as a moment of audio is spread over a greater area of tape, allowing more detail to be stored in the magnetised particles. Slower speeds give more recording time, but more information needs to be fitted into a smaller area of tape, which means less detail in the recording. This machine is capable of feeding the tape at 7.5, or 3 and 3 quarter inches per second. 
On this device, the speed is set by physically changing the diameter of the capstan. This is the motorised spindle which moves the tape when the pinch wheel pushes the tape up against it. We also have two reels for the tape. A supply reel which holds the tape ready to be used, and the take-up wheel which takes up the tape after it's passed through the device. It's of no surprise that all of these moving parts means a fairly complicated mechanical arrangement on the inside. Taking it apart is an easy process, despite the warning notice on the chassis not to do so. This was designed in an era when electronic devices were expected to be serviced, so all of the insides are made to be readily accessible by a qualified technician. It's a marvel of engineering that such a complex arrangement of moving parts and electronics can fit inside a box as compact as this. The main motor spins a flywheel via belt drive. This is what will keep everything in motion. A second belt connects the supply reel to the tape counter. These belts are still in pretty good condition and fortunately haven't disintegrated or melted into a weird slurry over time as often happens with rubber belts in these devices. While we are inside we can take a look at how the mechanisms move for actions like playing the tape, rewinding and fast forwarding. On setting the machine to play, we can see the pinch wheel move the tape onto the capstan, allowing the tape to be pulled through the device. At the same time, these levers bring the tape into contact with the playhead, allowing the magnetically stored audio data to be read. The device even has an automatic shutoff. This arm will cut the power if it drops under gravity. The tape usually keeps it from doing that, but should we reach the end of the tape, it falls and the machine shuts down. This also helps prevent the tape snapping if one of the reels is impeded for any reason. It's not exclusively mechanical. We also need electronic components to perform the pre-amplification. These amplifier boards are designed to pull out like an old games cartridge. Again, designed for easy maintenance and repair. Included in the original documentation were full circuit diagrams of the recorder, as well as a long list of service centres that were operating in the mid-70s when this device was produced. We can see that there was a repair made in October of 1974, replacing one of the transistors. When this recorder arrived with me, the amplifier boards were dead and producing no sound. Thanks to the full schematic and this 47 year old tip over what had been replaced, I was able to swap out a few more transistors and get the amplifier boards working again. I still have some work to do on this. The track selector switch, which determines onto which lines of the tape the audio will be recorded, is very temperamental and does need to be replaced. But upon inspection internally, this is housed in a frame which would require some dismantling of the mechanism to remove, and there are about a hundred thin wires approaching their 50th year that would need to be carefully desoldered and reattached in the correct arrangement on a new compatible switch. I've decided that it might not be worth the risk of messing with it, since this device does work in mono, which is all I need to use it as a guitar echo effect. So how do we turn a recorder into an echo machine? Well this is only possible on recorders which have independent record and playback heads. The echo is produced due to the physical separation between the record head and playback head. It takes time for the recording laid down by the record head to travel the distance to the playback head. That gap in time is our delay, and the speed that the tape is moving through the device will change that time. Slower tape speeds will give longer delays, while quicker tape speeds will give much shorter delays. We need to be able to send our guitar signal into the device, record it to tape, pick it back up from the tape a moment later, and then send that back to the amplifier. But this will only give us one delay, as we only have one playback head. If we want infinite repeats, we need to use a little mixer with an effect send and two channels. Bringing our guitar signal from our amp into channel one, we can send that signal out of the mixer's effect send and into the tape recorder. Then the output of the recorder can come back into channel two, which we will also route to the mixer's effect send. This will give us as many repeats as we want if we keep sending that single delay back into the tape machine. The mixer main out can then return to the amplifier. We can set the levels, and we can use a tape recorder as a delay unit with full control over the delay volume and number of repeats. The one catch, however, is delay time. This is entirely dependent on the speed of the tape, and this is limited to only two settings. At the speeds that this machine is capable of delivering, that affords us a nice lead echo and a short slapback delay, although we do need to shut down the machine to physically change between those speeds. 
For anyone who absolutely needs tap tempo and exact subdivisions for the delay, uh, you would hate this. But for those of us who've got a more laid back, old school approach to effects, there's nothing that sounds better than a tape echo. <laughs> this has been informative as to the manner in which I'm using my reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. If you see it spinning in the background of any of my future videos, be aware that it's probably because I'm using it as an echo effect rather than any of my more practical delay pedals. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. Bing 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 b